Hello and good afternoon and a very warm welcome to the first of our Eagles nestings. Now, I did promise you something very special this afternoon and this one certainly is not going to disappoint. We have got an all-star cast for you here today for the first of our series of Eagles nestings and what is right now, I think, if the clock is right, seven days exactly after we picked up our seventh BBL trophy we're going to go back to the first one, 6th of March, 2005, when the guys you're about to hear from were picking up a trophy for that first time in the monumental season for our Eagles. So whilst we're all here at home, uh, staying with our social distancing during the coronavirus pandemic, we're going to chat to some people using modern technology so we can hear what they had to say about that amazing memory, uh, not only from on the court, but also from the stands as well. So everyone that we've got to talk to today, first of all, sat in the stands uh, for that game. Uh, assistant coach now, fan at the time, Dave Forrester, welcome. Nice to be here. We've got our managing director, who was there at the time, of course, in the stand again as well. Paul Blake, great to have you here today, Paul. Hey, Dan. And some of our players. It is fantastic to uh, bring these guys back to all of our fans who I know would just love to hear what they had to say about that monumental game for the Eagles. First of all, uh, Eagle from 2000 to 2007, TJ Walker, great to have you here. Oh, it's good to be here. How's everybody doing? And also um, one of our most famous Eagles and particularly significant player in that um, uh, huge first trophy win, uh, Jeremy Hyatt, welcome back. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Guys, I'm going to flip to Dave first of all. Dave, um, just looking back at that first game, you were in the stands and uh, everyone who uh, follows the Eagles knows that uh, you're the guy to go to for the memories of the games and the stats and everything else. Uh, tell us a little bit about what that game meant to, to the club. It was a critical game because, to be blunt, we'd not won anything. And in fact, I'd been watching basketball for 20 years in the northeast of England and we'd not won anything ever. Um, and the gap had been building up over the previous two or three years and we knew that something special was coming and they played a, a semi-final in that competition against the Chester Jets that season and um, at the arena which was a really big game and uh, we beat them in overtime and, and I actually Bridgie made some shots in that game and kind of he stepped into the, um, the, the limelight for the first time I think TJ might have been injured actually I got him not sure. I think TJ was injured that game, and we yeah. came through that game, uh, and and we ended up having to play the final in Brighton against Brighton. And Brighton is about the furthest away you can get from Newcastle without going to France. So the, the Brighton Centre is literally on the seafront. If you, if you guys remember, it's literally you know you cross over the road and you're on the beach. And they were a team which had won a lot. And uh, Nick Nurse was obviously the coach. He's now the NBA champion coach. And um, we were kind of on our way up and they were on our way down. They were a little bit on their way down. Uh, the week before, we'd actually played them. we actually been down there and played at a different venue at the Triangle and we beat them in a close game. Uh, and um, I think they thought they were saving it for the final. They brought a new American in called Shane Gadsden who came out with the G League or the D League or whatever it was at the time. And he, he was all really, really talented. He was going to win the game for them. And um, basically half of Newcastle basketball support has travelled down to Brighton. And you'll see when you guys watch the tape, you'll see the massive, the massive crowd of basketball fans behind me uh, on the left side of the tape as you watch it. Uh, and, and everybody in our guys just came out and, and to, to be blunt, destroyed them, particularly in the second half. And um, you, for the fans who don't know the guys, is, um, TJ was a point guard. He's pretty, pretty, no, pretty noticeable on the court. He put the ball in his hands 90% of the time. Um, Jeremy was a two guard, and Jeremy made some serious shots in that game. I think Jay had about 21 points in that game, and including a, a pretty nasty fadeaway post up step back um, shot in the second half, which basically nailed it. And then um, we had Charles, everybody recognises Charles. Charles came off the bench, I think, and he was the MVP in that game, made some shots in the second half. Fab, who was in his most um, aggressive mode, probably the best way of putting it, 
and um, we also had Drew Sullivan playing his first year with us that year. Um, Frank Bennett, beg your pardon, not yeah, Frank yeah. Bennett. Frank mm. Bennett playing that year. Yeah, who was a, a, a lefty who a lefty from Georgia Southern. He only played one year with us, Frank, but he's very effective. And then the young guys and um, Bridgie and um, Darius and the fans who know Darius now and you guys might know Darius just had a, a double double in the trophy final 16 years later on last Sunday. Um, Darius came in with a ridiculous hairstyle. He got three fouls in three minutes and never got back on the court. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, D. Um, we got better games for you coming up in the future. But more than anything, the importance of, of that game was that it wasn't about just a bunch of guys who tur turned up and happened to win a basketball game. It was a bunch of guys who had played together for three or four years and had been through a lot of battles together uh, and had developed over that time a, you know, a chemistry and a belief in themselves. And hopefully when the fans get to watch it back on the, on the, on the, on the video, they'll see that. And it was special because we all followed it for so long and we'd been so close before. And it basically set off um, uh, a, we won the playoff final that year and then won everything the following year and it set that off. So I hope everybody enjoys it. Um, it's great to have these guys here who will obviously be a part of it and were part of what happened beforehand and, and the build up to the games. And I'm sure they'll be able to give us some insight about that as well. Um, but it really was a very, very special, uh, special occasion. TJ, just uh, jump into you first. Um, what did it feel like to to kind of like break through that that glass ceiling and and get that first trophy win uh, as a player? Uh, it was amazing, especially doing it with the group of guys. Obviously, working under Paul, the stuff that we talked about for the last, you know, for my five years, being Jay High four years. Oh, Fab at the time. So for us to do it together, and after hearing everything that we heard that we couldn't win, we had a good group of guys that can play the game but couldn't win games. It was amazing. You know what I mean? I remember I remember Paul coming into the locker room. I'm sitting in the locker room by myself at this point. He just pokes his head in the locker room and was like, I'm like, what's up? He's like, shit, we finally did it. Excuse me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it, it was a beautiful situation. So excuse my French. Sorry about that. <laughs> my, my, my <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure everyone's heard worse. Um, Jeremy, uh, I mean, it was a, a really awesome game for you, as, as, as Dave was saying. I think um, looking back at the tape, 21, 22 points, um, you, you scored it in that game. Um, it must have been pretty special. And I know we can all, uh, from the footage that we've seen in uh, Eagles intro videos for many years and uh, a photo that I can probably jump to and, and uh, show you here as well, I think uh if i click this button um the uh the, the famous uh <laughs> eagle uh and uh waving your arms um real special memory for you that game clapping, the wings. clapping his wings absolutely um yeah it was it was such a moment for us you know we, we were a very aggressive team very hungry team and uh like tj said you know just to piggyback on what he was saying it was definitely a process that you know we we couldn't get over the hump for a couple to a few years and then that next thing you know we just gelled together and that's one thing about that team is we we did it together no one really cared who got the glory uh, we mainly did it on the defensive end and everything else just kind of just fell into place so you know it was a very special moment for us for for Newcastle fans um, the whole the whole program organization and uh, I was just happy to be a part of it. Paul, it was uh, a few years, obviously, since you took over the club at this point, and um, you know, really, uh, obviously, tough times in the early years. But managing to get that first trophy win after having been uh, well, uh, you know, unlucky uh, a few years beforehand, um, must have just felt great from the perspective of running the club. Yeah, yeah, it certainly wasn't an overnight success. You know, I mean, that was uh, took over in '99 and. And obviously, six years later, we, we get the, the first trophy. TJ will remember um, going to the trophy final in 2001 against uh, Chester um, and uh, gave them a run, but they had a super tough team that year. Um, and didn't quite get over the hump that final. So, uh, um, 
you know, when you when you get to one and you don't know where you've been before with it, it's kind of hard to think if if you'll ever sort of get back again. Uh, so to do it to do it then and then to go on the journey we've been on since is uh, incredible. TJ and uh, Jeremy, um, first of all, TJ, looking back at the game, you were up by, I think, only two points uh, at the half, as fans are going to see in the game, without giving up too much away. Um, how did it feel at, at halftime in such an important game where you hopefully felt like you were going to turn this around into a win? Um, if you can think back to that, that moment in the locker room when you were you know, hoping to, to bounce out of there and, and, and get the W and get the trophy, TJ. Yeah, for some reason, I remember that one. Like that whole game. The other finals, I really don't remember. But that one, um, honestly, I, I, I we were calm. I, I knew, we felt it. I think for me, I was probably the only player on the in that locker room that wasn't confident. But confident at the time because I had just come off the injury. I didn't know how I was going to be. Able to do it. But I knew my guys was ready. And once I felt the energy from them in the first half, I knew only thing I. Play some defense or rebound because it was they were it was about to come. I, I felt it. Me and Jay talked about this. Here comes, you know what I mean? And, and the vibe was. I don't remember Fab talking to us too much today. I I just remember coming out the second half and it just kind of rolled. This started going and it started going. We started getting stops and the rest was hit. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I'm I'm getting goosebumps right now. Um, just yeah. to be, be be quite frank, because I remember it too, just sitting in the locker room, because I felt like we knew that it, it was going to be a problem for them moving forward, you know what I mean, in that second half. And we, like you said, we strung together a few stops. We started getting some, some buckets to fall. The crowd was into it, you know, and it was uh, – it, it almost turned into a home game for us. And uh, it was just so gratifying because we were doing it on, on their home floor on top of it all too. So – um, you know, you could just, like you said, that, that energy built up, man, and we just, it, it was a steamroll. So it was, uh, it, was, it was great to be a part of, for sure. Did you think when you were lifting the trophy for that first time that uh, a year later you'd end up lifting them all? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, we, had, we knew what we had. Um, we just built off that momentum. And, again, it was a very competitive league, too. You know, um, yeah. Chester, you know, they were formidable. <laughs> Um, but they were they were a very tough team, very talented, you know, down the line when you think of the Brightons, you know, et cetera. So, but yeah, we had that confidence with, within ourselves because we practiced every day. You know what I mean? No, no one can really understand how hard we would play in practice. You know what I mean? And the defense, like we, I mean, we'd be ready. We'd almost go to blows in practice. You know what I mean? So it wasn't, we didn't take advantage of, you know, of, of you know, just, you know, not to steal Allen Iverson practice. No, we used to practice, you know, and that led to, to the success that we had in the game. So we were confident because we knew what the work that we put in. Look, guys, I know that what? the fans are really going to be excited to, to watch this game. Um, and uh, for you guys as well, uh, I know, TJ, we were talking, we were just setting up this interview that you uh, haven't seen this game since you stepped off the floor and uh, you're looking forward to watching it too. So uh, we'll get right into it. Thank you so much for talking to us today. And um, I know... Um, because you guys have been so kind as to say that you'll, you'll join us again a couple of times over the uh, coming weeks. Um, and we, we're going to look back at some of the other uh, huge Eagles games through history as well. But thank you guys so much for being a part of this. And um, we hope you enjoy the game. Why, well, yeah, man. <laughs> cheers, cheers. Cheers, <laughs> cheers <my dear. laughs> Thanks, Don. Cheers, and I really appreciate you guys. I know y'all love me because my name is Jeremy with no hair. So I love that little song y'all used to sing too. Yeah, I'll see yeah, that one. The band. one. <laughs> my song. So here we go then with our first of our Eagles nestings. After hearing from all the guys, let's go back to the sixth of March, two thousand and five, and to Brighton. The lineup for the Newcastle Eagles coming out at number four. Make some noise for Jeremy Hyatt. And by TJ Walker. Wearing six, it's Andrew Bridge. At seven, Frank Bennett. 
wearing eight, Terry Lawson. At ten, Charles Smith. Wearing thirteen, Darius Defoe. At fifteen is Andrew Sullivan. And wearing twenty, captain of the only BBL player coach of the moment, fabulous four nine. Assistant coaches, Billy Sprague, that is the Springfield Honda, Newcastle Eagles. No neutrals in the house, you got to support one of these two teams. Make some noise. The 2005 BBL Trophy Final. Andrew Sullivan for the Eagles and Andrew Lane from the Bears jumping up. It's TJ Walker, the point guard, for the first offense for the Eagles. Four periods of ten minutes each. Jeremy Hyatt. Lornoy passes it to Sullivan. Pressure from Tony Holly. Fab. Goes out to TJ Walker. Is long. Steve Lepore. Nine is up on the rebound. Low post, Andrew Elaine. Elaine doesn't get the roll. Sullivan at pace. It's a travelling violation. Shane Gadsden, playmaker for the Bears. Losing his footing. Tony Holly. Vasquez good for Tony Holly. Pushing foul. Andrew Sullivan. Doesn't go down. Tony Holly snaps down the rebounds. Almost eight rebounds per game. Tony Holly in the season. Holly throws it out to Deng. Doesn't go. And it was uh, on the defensive rebound. Jeremy Hyatt firing. Draw Zion. Back with the Bears. Shane Gadsden. Lovely pass. Rejected! Jeremy Hyatt, get out of there! Bears have the basketball. Steve Laporte in bounds. Motion. Oh, that's running down. Eagles have the basketball. Play continues. Sullivan. Paddock cake, paddock cake. Jadson again. Lepore, nice fake. Going in amongst the big men. There's an end line. Sweet pass. A solid defense denies as you think. Sullivan and 
Bennett. Bears still by one. We played three minutes. Elaine, back in on Sullivan. Andrew Elaine will shoot two. points in the game through the season since he's been with the Eagles. Lepore. Elaine from downtown. No points. Andrew Sullivan sweeps the defensive boards. Goes the bench, welcome on the floor, wearing number 10 for Springfield Honda, Newcastle Eagles, it's Charles Smith. <laughs> TJ Walker makes the first for the charity strike. But not the second. Not 
this time. But Tony Holly cleans up. Didn't drop for Tony on two attempts. Smith. Fade away. A response from Charles Smith. Opening two for him. Lane going strong. EBL men's and women's division one finals. Tickets are available on 0870 445 0606. Two days, six games, four champions. Also featuring the and one dunkers, you'll see them later on as well as the Rockets cheerleaders, the PBL Basketball Finals Weekend, the LA in Birmingham. Support for both teams. Holding foul, TJ Walker, first foul. Bears going to a stack. It unravels. Gadsden. A balance, but down it goes, Steve Lepore. <laughs> Can't make it, Frank Bennett. It out. Oh, 
offensive end for the Eagles. He's on the seven already. Have we only come into the game a couple of minutes ago? Fast break. Six and Darius Defoe, 13. Make some noise for your team. Second quarter action, the 2005 BBL Trophy Final is underway. Oh, throw it up for two points is Ronnie Baker. They see your support. away from Jeremy Hyatt's, his first bucket. Two points advantage, the Bears. Execute. 
Bats and spins. Rolls it out. Lawson. Illinois, the head fake. Going in. Can't make it. Little man, Ronnie Baker, showing the little guys can rebound inside too. for Springfield Honda, Newcastle Eagles. Great offense, Eagles. TJ Walker on the end of it. Some drive in the lane, beautiful play. A face chain, Gadsden. Smith, shorts, Gadsden rebound. Tide is up. Smith. As you think, big on defense. Complete it, TJ Walker. Smith. Down the bucket, basket is good. We get back the bonus shot to come for the three point play opportunity. Charles Smith, shooting two. Correction shooting. Correction shooting one for the three point play. Twenty nine. Eagles twenty seven. The Bears. TJ Walker, as you think, tying up Ronnie Baker at pace. Can't get Good hands from Charles Smith. No foul. Thank you. 
Hang time. Gadsden though returned from his first of two shots. Newcastle Eagles. La Paz. Still in Eagles. Sullivan. In feed. Big defense for the Bears. Jensen. No points, the lane follows up. Five outlets of Subway in the Brighton area. 2005 BBL Trophy Final. Smith releasing Andrew Sullivan.
put it up. In and out of the three point attempts. Good work from uh, Fab. Andrew Sullivan uh, brings it down. Smith. Smith. Kansas! Basket good. Time out called by Nick Nurse. Half a second. Half a second left in the half. Smith can produce. Spear pass. Elaine spins. Doesn't go. That's half time. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, make some noise. Both these two teams. At the half, it's Brian Bears 29. Springfield Hunt, the Newcastle Eagles 34. for the second half. Newcastle Eagles fans, they've seen a Uta Army. Brian Bears, Blue Army, make some noise. Smith, Bennett, and Hyatt, the five on the floor for the Eagles, the poor. Gadsden, Holly, Deng, and Elaine, the five of the Bears. Battle is on, Tony Holly. Eagles with the ball. Hang time from Hyatt. Thirty-six twenty-nine in favor of the Springfield Honda Newcastle Eagles. Traveling violation. from Charles Smith. The ball for the Brian Bears. Lane on the drive. It's a 24 second shot clock violation. Foul 
to Tony Holly. Substitution requested. Darius Capo is in in place of Frank Bennett. The balance is 15 points.
This is on the play. Foul is on Andrew Sullivan, second personal. In line, right bears. The four in to Andrew Lane. Second quick foul, Darius Defoe this time calls for infringement. Coach Nick Nurse brings back Ronnie Baker. Good hands from Ronnie Baker. He gets the steal. And the outlet pass to the poor. <laughs> As Zhang comes in and plays for Tony Holly. Bears fans, put your hands together for Tony. Three points in the game. Hits the top end of his two shots. Only one. Bennett snaps the rebound. Thirty-three forty-five. Just under four and a half to play in the third. Good work on the defensive ends. It'll be Brighton Bears with the ball. It was held ball. The arrow is with the Brighton Bears. Possession the Bears. Still treatment going on for Shane Gadsden. Strong defense for the Newcastle Eagles. Hyatt. Played away. Oh, string, Jeremy Hyatt. Great play, Fabulous! 
Despite the pressures of Ronnie Baker, the basket is good. Foul called on Ronnie. So a steal and two points for Fabronoi. Shane Gadsden. Adjustments have been made and Dronane sitting down. Fab has the bonus. To bring up the 50 points. Biggest lead of the game for the Newcastle Eagles. Three for Ronnie Baker. from Randy Knapp. Ball up from Frank Millett. Coming on the end of the lane in. Keep your support going for your team. Go for three. Hyatt releases TJ Walker. Smith. No points. Good vision from Hyatt. Fab to Roy. Thanks to more. Releasing TJ. <laughs> Bells on Charles Smith. TJ Walker. It off again. In the final minute now, the third quarter. Ronnie Baker. And fouled by Fab Lenoy. Foul one, Fab. Backboard violation. Terry Lawson. Seconds to the third. Baker, can't 
Tigers. Excellent third quarter for the Springfield Hunt, the Newcastle Eagles, who outscore the Brown Bears 23 to 10. At the end of the third, it's Springfield Hunt, the Newcastle Eagles 57. Brown Bears on 39. <laughs> One more time, who's supporting? So 39 57 as we enter the final 10 minutes. Be loud and proud for your team. Maybe seem a long way back, but you never know. Come on, Brighton fans, come on, Eagles fans, make some noise for your teams. from the corner is long. Bab rebounding, TJ in action, fast breaking the Eagles. Tied up by Aju Deng. Bonoy the long pass. Deng recovers. Shane Gadsden for two shots. So from that for Moai. Movement of the feet is a travel. Five line ball bears. Forty-one fifty-seven. Holding foul, Steve Lepore. Andrew Lane pushing foul. I 
pass from the top. The three points. The trade for Jeremy Hyatt. 17 big points. Holding foul, Matt Lenoy will have the shots. Shot clock angles and reset. Fifteen points to TJ Walker. For the tip in is Frank Bennett. Double digits for Frank. Seconds of shot clock violation went before the shot went in. Timeout requested. Five minutes 36 to play. Right, make some noise for your teams.
one-time grab of the assist from Sullivan. Three-pointer! Steve LaCour. Second three. Only one for Andrew. Good hustle from Clap for to TJ. Pull up from Money Baker. Bang! Under three to play. 
20 point advantage to the Eagles. Sullivan on the drive gets the basket and the foul from Andrew Deng. Bonus shot follows. Assistance of Johnny Baker. Terry Lawson took the foul. First foul. Darius Defoe back on the floor. from downtown for three chains. Oh, 
closing minutes of the 2005 EBL Trophy Final. Ronnie Baker, yet again. Andrew Bridge. Andrew Sullivan. Going through the motions. This game is closed. Congratulations, Springfield, Honda, Newcastle Eagles, the winners of 2005 PBL Trophy. The presentation table is already up on the floor. The next presentation of the and the medals and the Thank you. 